from Seven Sports, the high school red zone. Here's Pete Yannity. Uh, David Crane, the new coach at Seneca, back at his alma mater after a run at Greenville. And tonight, against visiting Chapman, a team trying for its 34th win in the past 36 games. Dante Smith bowling into the end zone in the second quarter, puts his Chapman Panthers up 28-7, to two possessions later. Cole Bade, a Walker Lathrop, 62 yards, cutting the Chapman lead to 35-14. But Chapman able to control this one. They put up 52 last year on Seneca in Inman. Tonight, McKelly Colasurdo, our star of the week to Ben Rollins for that connection and a touchdown. Chapman cruises on 34, their past 36. Welcome into the show, week number two in the high school red zone. Some nice rivalry battles tonight, some longtime rivalry battles like the one in Gaffney at the reservation. Back in the day, it was the toughest ticket in town when Greenwood and Gaffney got together. The series went away for a while, but there they were tonight. Going at it again, and Jamari Littlejohn running left for a 23-yard Gaffney score midway through the second quarter. Put his team up 20-6, 36 seconds left before the intermission. Andre Lindsay to Natron Johnson. That's a 40-yard connection. Gaffney up 27-6 of the break, early third. Lindsay and Tyler Smith, that's a five-yard connection. The Tribe won last year 28-7 down in the Emerald City tonight. The pick by Stan Ellis leads to a 35-yard score and a romp for Gaffney. Indians on their way to a 41-6 victory. They were windmilling tonight as they get an opening triumph. It looked like a first game for us. That's what kind of scared me. I knew Greenwood had one under their belt. And usually you make your most improvement from your first to your second game. So I was kind of, I was pleased with us the second half, the way we got started. And Gaffney's now won 10 of the past 11 in the series. Burns goes on the road to Northwestern tonight. Northwestern's new head coach, Paige Wofford, did a great job at Daniel a year ago, turning around their offense. Lauren Scott in stride, and, well, uh, I should say Rajay Harris in stride as he turns around the right side, takes it on in. Burns building an early lead. Harris again putting his shoulder down, getting into the end zone, and that makes it a 13-0 game. Scott later looking and making the connection on the touchdown for Burns. Rebels with Scott getting together, Braylon uh, Jair Najee Burris on that 73-yard touchdown, and Burns tonight rolling on to the win, 40-0. They get the triumph, and a nice one indeed in Rock Hill tonight. Dorman is in York County this evening, playing at York against the Cougars. Opening drive of the second half for the Cavaliers, Hayden Lee, Nathan Storch, the big fella. A little screen pass deep into York territory. Lee then to Kendall Norman over the middle. That's a touchdown for the Cavs. Dorman moves out to a 2-0 start. They triumph 52 to nothing is your final score. Spartanburg was supposed to play its home opener night in its brand new stadium. That's not ready, so for a second straight year, the Vikings visit the Greer Yellow Jackets. And over the middle, Zay Foster to Kelvon Lee, a 20-yard connection. It leads to Foster. Getting together with Lee. Look at the scramble. He started right, going back left, and he's going to go back to his right. Now the lefty's going to toss it, and the touchdown. What a great play that was. Spartanburg at a 7-0 lead. They're up 10-0 later when Raheem Jeter airs it out, picked off by Jamari Benjamin. Vikings avenge last year's loss against Greer. They get the 20-12 victory. Well, in the final game of the regular season last year, Hillcrest went to Malden and won 6-4. Anthony Freight making his debut as the Rams head coach tonight. Odds were it was going to be a more conventional score. At least Raquan Fenderson wants something to say about that. A nice pickup. Then Fenderson does the honors in the third quarter. And the Rams continue their dominance of the Mavericks. They've won 11 out of 12 in the series now. Hillcrest on the road wins 28-7. Those teams will meet later in the year. Other rivalry games for you tonight. The Battle of Lawrence County. Torrey Fountain, his debut as the head coach at Clinton. Did a fine job over at Lamar, but tonight, well, the bounces were going. Lawrence's way. Kale Coates recovering the fumble there for the Raiders on the next play. Quarterback Ryan Campbell, he's a veteran. Into the end zone for the touchdown and a 7-0 Lawrence advantage. Later in that second quarter, Jordan Woodruff going to go up the middle, and Lawrence was going to go on its way to the victory. They won last year. They've now won seven of the past eight in the series, 28-0 with a shutout. Easily makes the trip down Highway 93, taking on a Daniel team that got out of the gate with a big win a week ago, and, well, it was a good opening win for Easley as well. Tyler Venables can't find anyone, so when you've got the legs to churn toward the goal line, you take advantage of them. Leads to Billy Bruce and a touchdown. Daniel 
goes on to the victory. The teams have split their last 10, but the Lions tonight roar 51 to 6. Eastside makes the drive around the corner, takes on a Riverside team on a 20 game losing streak. Late second quarter, seven point lead for the Eagles on the road. Marshall Skoloff to Peyton Mangrum. Oh, what a nice catch, a nice throw. A couple of plays later, Skoloff showing his Jets he wanted to throw. Instead, he'll run 21 to 7 Eastside. Back comes Riverside just before the half. Jake Henderson goes upstairs. Nick Carr, one of the players they got to come on to the football team for the basketball team. A great catch, hurts his shoulder. Eventually, they try the Blake. Uh, the field goal attempt and it's blocked and Blake Cheatham going to run it back over 70 yards for an east side touchdown. They led 28-7 at the break. They win 49-7 tonight to extend a good run of late against their rivals. Meanwhile, Southside and Mann doing battle. Mann's last victory came two years ago in the opening game at home against the Tigers. They get off to a good start tonight. Noah Staples to Todd Smith. Smith gets some yards after the catch. Later in the drive, it's Staples going upstairs again. Thomas Hodges in what was Mann's opening game and the second game of the year for Southside. Back, though, comes Kalitri Hunter, a, a Southside team that didn't have its star running back, Braden Bennett, nor another great playmaker, Tay Jeffries. They're out due to injury. This was a tight ball game. The Tigers prevail on the road 17 to 14 against their rivals, JL Mann. Abbeville taking a 23 game winning streak down the line tonight, meeting up with the Bulldogs in Newberry and the defense stepping up in the first quarter for the Panthers. Titus Paul, oh, he wanted to get to the end zone, but gets the ball back for his team. Then JD Moore going to push on in for the score. The Panthers, 24 straight wins. They've won 112 games this decade. And after a shutout last year, they go on the road and win 35 to 6 tonight against Newberry and take two straight in the series. Woodruff and Broom, longtime Spartanburg County rivals at the home of the Centurions tonight. And B.J. Bailey, new quarterback for the Wolverines to O'Marion McElvin, 44 yards and a 35-20 lead in the second half of action for Woodruff. Then Shamar Dendy, the transfer from Lawrence, his lone season playing with the Wolves. Nice job eluding would-be tacklers. Woodruff and Dendy were on their way to a 45-28 win. They're 2-0, and it's week two in the high school red zone.